How's it going everyone? So today we are going to go over a Google specific question called validate stack sequences. And in the name, it's no surprise that we're going to be using a stack and this is of medium difficulty. So before I get started, just like how I mentioned in my previous videos, don't forget to go support me on Patreon. If you want to, you'll get access to a private discord channel and the community is slowly growing. So onto the problem, our description says given two sequences pushed and popped, with distinct values, return true if and only if this could have been the result of a sequence of push and pop operations on an initially empty stack. And before we get to an example, let's read some of the important notes at the bottom. It says that pushed and popped have the same length and they both have distinct values where pushed is a permutation of popped. So these notes are actually very useful for us when we are implementing our solution. So all this problem is asking us to do is we need to push all of the elements in our pushed array and pop all of the elements in our popped array. However, we need to do it in a specific order to where whenever we push all of the elements and pop all of the elements, when we are left with our stack, it should be empty. So if by the end we have exhausted pushing and popping all of the elements and our stack is empty at the end, that means we would return true from our function. So to solve this problem, we're going to need two pointers where one pointer is looking at the start of pushed and one pointer is looking at the start of popped. And now what we want to do is start pushing the elements in our pushed array to the stack, right? And we only pop whenever the number that we're looking at in popped is actually on the top of the stack. So let's walk through this so it makes more sense. Right now, our stack is empty. So that means we can just push the element on the stack from our pushed array. So we pushed one to our stack and we moved our pointer on our pushed array forward. So now we have to compare the popped number that we're looking at, which is four, with the number that is currently on top of the stack. If the number on top of our stack is equal to the number that we're looking at in our popped array, that means we would pop from the stack. But in this case, obviously one is not equal to four. So all that means is we need to add in the other number from our pushed array, which would be two. So we pushed two to the top of our stack and then we moved our pointer forward in our pushed array. Now we need to compare the element on the top of our stack with the number we're currently looking at in our popped array. So two is obviously not equal to four. So that means we just need to add in the number in our pushed array once again, which would be three. So we pushed three to the top of our stack and moved our pointer forward. We compare the element at the top of our stack with our popped number that we're looking at. Four is not equal to three. So that means we just add in the number from our pushed array, which would be four. So we added four to the top of our stack and then we moved our pushed pointer forward. However, now if we look at the top of our stack and the popped number that we're looking at, they are equal. So what that means now is we do need to pop from our stack and then move our popped pointer forward. So we popped four and moved our pointer forward from our popped array. Now we're going to compare the top element on the stack with the popped number we're looking at. Three is not equal to five. So that means we just need to add in the number from our pushed array, which would be five. So we added five to the top of our stack and moved our pointer forward once again. So we need to look at the top element in our stack and the current number we're looking at in our popped array. Five is equal to five, so that means we pop from our stack again. So we popped five and moved our pointer forward. Now three, the top of our stack, is equal to three, the number we're currently looking at in our popped array. That means we pop from the stack once again. So we popped three and moved our pointer forward. Now the top of our stack is a two and the current number we're looking at is a two, so we pop again. And then finally, we're just left with a number one on our stack and the current number we're looking at in popped is also a one, so that means we pop from our stack one last time. So as you can see, we've exhausted going through both our pushed and popped array. They are both outside of the range of our array, right? Both of our pointers and our stack is currently empty. So since we have exhausted looking through every single element in pushed and popped and our stack is empty, that means we can return true from our function. If we did not look through every popped element 
or push every popped element in our stack, then we would have to return false from this function. So we're given two arrays, pushed and popped, and we need to return true or false, a Boolean, whether or not we can perform all of these operations successfully. So the first thing we want to do is initialize a stack. And now what we want to do is initialize the two pointers that we talked about. We had one for pushed and one for popped. However, the pointer for our pushed array can just sit in a for loop because we're going to be looping over all of those elements. However, the pointer for our popped array will have to live outside. So we can say int i is equal to 0. And then let's also extract the length of either pushed or popped. They will always be the same length, so it doesn't matter which one we use. So we could say n is equal to pushed.length. Now we want to loop over all of the elements in our pushed array. So we could say for int num in pushed, every time we loop over a new number, we're going to immediately add it to the stack. So we can say stack dot push num. And now this is the interesting part. So after we've added that new number into our stack, we need to check if the number that we have just added is the number that we're currently looking at in our popped array. If the number on the top of our stack is equal to the number that I, our pointer for popped, is currently looking at, then that means we would pop from our stack. And we would continuously do this until the numbers are not equal or we've just exhausted looking through all of the elements in our stack. So we can say while our stack is not empty and if we peek on the top of our stack, if it's equal to the number we're looking at in pop, which is at popped at index i, that means we need to pop from our stack and move our popped pointer forward. So we could say stack.pop and then increase i. And so when we exit this for loop, there's still one more condition we need to handle, and that is if we actually have exhausted looking through all of the pushed and all of the popped elements. So to do that, all we can just say is return if i is equal to n. The reason why this works is if you imagine i is not equal to n, that would mean that we did not successfully pop every single element in our popped array. But if i is equal to n, that means that all of the elements that we pushed inside of our array ended up getting popped. And so it's kind of implicit that if i is equal to n, that means that our stack must be empty when we came out of the for loop. So as you can see, it's not a whole lot of code to do this problem, but definitely you have to understand how to utilize stacks properly to solve this. So let's make sure the solution works. And there we go. The time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of n, where n is the size of pushed or popped. Pushed and popped are always going to be the same length, and we have to iterate over every single element in pushed and popped. It may seem like this isn't a linear runtime algorithm because of the while loop that's nested in the for loop, but keep in mind that we're only ever touching each element in both pushed and popped a single time. And then as for our space complexity, it's also going to be big O of n because every time we have to add n elements inside of our stack. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I plan to do a lot more medium to hard level problems. I know a lot of you have been saying that you want more difficult problems. And thank you to all of my patrons that have you know, supported me. I really, really appreciate it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.